Today I borrowed a video idea from About to Eat where I purchased 12 baguettes and I'm gonna showcase the three form factors that a baguette can take on to create nine different meals. I've made a scorecard for each meal. All of these should take less than 30 minutes and were all made by bundling the baguette with just a couple of other ingredients. And you know who else is great at bundling? Today's sponsor, Geico. So check out the link below to see how you could save even more when you bundle your car insurance with home, motorcycle, and more. We'll talk a bit more about Geico later, but first, we've gotta do a quick primer on baguettes because it's insane how many of these are made and eaten in France. There are over six billion baguettes sold in France. This makes bakeries the number one food retail business and something French people eat quite literally every day. Now, the price of a baguette was last government regulated in 1978, but it is still controlled by the French consumers' expectations of what they should cost. The current price of the baguette tradition, from what I've seen in Paris, is typically one to one euro 20, meaning this is one of the cheapest ways to make a filling meal in an instant. With so many great baguettes available though, my question is, how can we use them in cooking? You know, outside of just housing them by the fistful. So first up, we have the whole category, and this is probably how I've eaten 90% of my baguettes. You know, think your sandwiches, your toast, or just eating them with like a hunk of cheese and some wine. Uh, but let me show you what I made with the baguettes for this category. For the first baguette dish, I had to cover the classic jambon bear, literally a ham and butter sandwich that is super popular. As one would expect, all you have to do is slice the baguette open and spread on a nice layer of French butter from top to bottom on both sides. Now find the highest quality deli ham you can. I'm using a jambon blanc, which is just a cooked ham, and then layer that over the sandwich. And this is the sandwich in its simplest form. It's all about three high quality ingredients. That being said, I think it is much better with some cheese, a little acidity, and some greens. For my version, I first start with a nice layer of butter, just like before on both sides, but then I like to add a couple of cranks of black pepper. Then I follow that with some thinly shaved comte or whatever cheese you want, add some pickled onions for color and some dressed greens for a bit of lubrication in the sandwich. Then just load that up with as much ham as you want and top it up, and there we have a beautiful jambon bear with a couple of extra things. Sandwiches are probably my favorite food group, so naturally this is gonna get a pretty high score from me. So if you've never made pizza from a loaf of bread of any kind, you need to. It's perfect for scratching that pizza itch with like 5% of the effort. And first we just need to gather all the toppings. So place 15 grams of butter and 15 grams of olive oil into a saucepan to melt down along with some crushed garlic cloves and red pepper flake. Now just let everything toast for about 60 seconds which is going to infuse those flavors into the oil. Now, you can feel free to make a proper tomato sauce if you want to, but for this, I just grabbed some crushed tomatoes, stirred in some salt and some oregano, before just blitzing that together until it's smooth. Then lastly, here's my favorite tip for pizza cheese. Add spices to it. In this case, I have some red chili flake and dried oregano, and just mix that roughly together. The spices are going to stick to the pieces of the cheese, and it's going to help them disperse those flavors across the pizza as it melts in the oven. To assemble, first slice the baguette in half, but not all the way through. Now, very important, we want to flatten out the top side a bit. So to do that, I added a little slit to the bread, and then I also compressed it down with a sheet pan. And this is just going to give us a little bit more surface area and a thinner but uniform crust. So first, drizzle that spicy garlic butter over the bread and brush it all over, and then pop that under the broiler for one to two minutes until it's nice and toasty. Once it's out of the oven, just top it up as you please. I'm layering on the sauce, that toasted garlic, plenty of our mozzarella with spices, and a final shaving of Parmesan. I mean, come on, how good does that look? And that's before it even went in the oven. So again, just toss the pizza underneath the broiler, and there you have it. This kind of reminds me of a Detroit-style pizza, which I absolutely love. And again, it takes about 5% of the actual effort that it normally does. So instead of showing another toast or sandwich, a lot of the time, I've just been eating baguettes plain. And in France, nearly every meal is served with a baguette that can be used to sop up whatever you happen to have on your plate. But all baguettes, while decent, are not created equal, so I wanted to show you how to find the good ones because it can be a bit confusing. So a boulangerie or grocery store may have several different baguettes for sale, and first up, if you see a baguette looking like this, don't order it. 
Well, it's gonna be the cheapest. This is basically a commercial baguette that's super light and it doesn't have that big bubbles and there's no browning in flavor. What you wanna order, in my opinion, is the traditional baguette, which is just four ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast. Now, even here, La Baguette Tradition, there can be a wide array of quality. This first one is from a grocery store, the middle from an average bakery, and then the last one from a higher end bakery. And what I like is that deeper browning, even that burnt tip, so use your eyes to find the good ones. So whole baguettes are done and pretty self-explanatory, but categories two and three really force me to get creative and have some fun with these baguettes. For example, right now I've got a cube baguette that I'm actually dipping into a dip that has baguette crumbs in it. This is kind of meta right now. Category two is bread cubes. Now, this form factor is pretty fun since we are kind of moving away from the baguette being the star and now we're treating it more as a complementary ingredient. And first, we have the Italian bread salad, panzanella. To start, I toss some of the baguette bread cubes onto a baking sheet and then place those into a 350 degree oven to dry them out for just about 15 minutes. And meanwhile, we can prep the veg. So any tomatoes will work for this dish, but I'm using cherry tomatoes and then doing the classic deli container trick to quickly cut through them. Once those are cut, toss them into a bowl along with a pinch of salt and mix everything together. And while these sit, the tomatoes will start to release their juices, which we're actually gonna use in the dressing later on. For the other veg, I have some red onions that I slice thinly and then cut them into half moons. And finally, I rough chop some fresh basil. So after waiting for 15 minutes, you can see the juices that the tomato released. And I poured this into the container along with a cap full of balsamic vinegar, a half clove of grated garlic, 10 cranks of black pepper, and finally some olive oil before just shaking that up to disperse the oil, which creates a beautiful vinaigrette. To assemble, add the onions to the bowl along with the basil. Now the bread cubes out of the oven are nice and toasted and crunchy, but they still do have a little bit of chew to them. Toss the bread cubes and vegetables together before splashing that vinaigrette over everything and tossing that all together to let it combine. Now, it's best to let the salad rest for about 15 to 20 minutes before serving in a bowl so those bread cubes can soften up a bit. And I also like to shave over some Parmesan right before eating. This salad is amazing for the crunchy and chewy textural experience. And as you can tell by me devouring it with my hands, this is another winner. Super fresh and a great way to use up some leftover bread. Next up, I went for an egg frittata, a great way to use up whatever veg or meats you have laying around in the fridge. So to start, place some oil in a pan. Then I had some thinly sliced onion and red peppers that I salt ahead of time and just sauteed those down and then moved them aside. Next, I placed some butter down and then added ripped up chunks of the leftover baguette. And these are gonna start to soak up the butter and crisp up. While that's going, I also whisked up eggs with salt, pepper, and a bit of milk. And then after the bread has crisped, I just poured the eggs over the top and then layered on the sauteed vegetables, some sliced ham, and finally a sprinkle of grated cheese. Now I let the eggs cook for about two minutes on the stove before sliding that whole thing into a 400 degree oven until the middle is set. Finally, slide that out onto a plate and add some chives over the top for some color before slicing and serving. Now, I'll admit, frittatas aren't my favorite thing in the world, but it is a very useful technique to make a filling meal out of almost nothing. To round out the bread cubes, I wanted to keep it easy with seasoned croutons. And these are honestly great plain as a snack or to be used in salads. So first, I sliced up a baguette into crouton-sized cubes, and there are a lot of ways we could potentially season these, but I wanted to keep it simple with a subtle flavored oil. So to a pan, add a big glug of olive oil over medium-low heat. To that, add some fresh rosemary and a couple of cloves of garlic. And I also added some black peppercorns and Maggie seasoning, which is gonna be my main salt source. Now, just let this slowly cook for two to three minutes, which will infuse those flavors into the oil. After straining, I layered some of the oil onto the sheet tray and tossed on the bread cubes. Then I spooned the rest of the oil over the top and mixed everything together. Once that's coated, just place the sheet tray in a 350 degree oven until golden brown. Now it's up to you how brown you wanna get them. This is 30 minutes versus a bit over an hour and I definitely prefer that darker color. Once brown, just store these in a container to snack on or for using in a quick salad. Here I had some greens, then I tossed on those croutons, pickled onions for a pop of that color before spooning over a vinaigrette, and then I add some shaved cheese with some cranks of black pepper, a delicious way to enjoy a baguette. 
So cubes are done, and last up we have the breadcrumb form factor. Now, primarily this will just be used as a supporting roll to give it some texture. You know, think like mixing it into meatballs or maybe using it as part of a crust for frying something. But as you'll see in this first pasta dish, it can still be a star. So to make the breadcrumbs for these, I just toasted the ripped up baguettes at 250 degrees Fahrenheit until it was completely dried out and then just crushed them up. Now, I did make two different sizes. First, I did some fine ones that I blitzed and also got everywhere with my hand blender. Then I also did some coarser hand ground ones that I'll be using for the pasta dish. To a pan, I added some cut up salami along with some garlic and let that start to toast for about one to two minutes. Next, I added a pat of butter along with some red chili flakes and stirred that up before tossing in the coarse breadcrumbs. And they'll begin to soak up all that flavor from the garlic, salami, butter, and the pepper and just start to toast up. I kept it on low heat, making sure not to burn, and then just transferred it to a bowl. It's a nice spicy, salty, and crunchy topping. Now, for the pasta itself, I kept it super simple. First, I added a bit of butter and tossed in some cooked pasta, along with some of the pasta water, which is going to help form that sauce. I grated some fresh parm and added more of the red pepper to that, before tossing it in with the pasta and mixing everything together until it was cohesive and smooth. Then I just thinned it out with more pasta water as needed, before transferring it over to a serving bowl. I spooned over a bit more of the pan sauce and then hit it with that crunchy bread crumb topping. Now, I've done a crispy top mac and cheese bake before, but this is the first time I've done it with a fresh pasta and it will not be the last. Second up, chicken cutlets, which I always forget just how easy these are. To start, I sliced the chicken breast in half and then added salt to all the pieces and let that dry brine for about an hour before breading them. Now, for the breadcrumbs, I added the fine ones to a bowl along with some oregano, black pepper, and freshly grated parm, and now for a three-part breading. First, I dredged the chicken into the flour, next into a beaten egg, and lastly into those seasoned baguette crumbs, and you really want to make sure you press those crumbs onto the chicken to get them to stick. Slide the breaded cutlet into a pan with hot oil, and because of how thin the cutlet is, it only takes like two minutes aside. Definitely be careful not to burn these. After about three to four minutes, just look at this absolute beauty. Now, I just sliced it up and spritzed over some lemon juice, but you could eat this with a sandwich or paired with a salad, or it would make a killer leftover topping for that pizza I showed you earlier. Last up, I had to make one of my all-time favorite dips, muhammara. It's a Middle Eastern roasted red pepper dip seasoned with pomegranate and molasses, and the breadcrumbs are used to give it some texture. So first, I chopped up some red bell peppers and added a bit of oil and salt, and then roasted those for about 35 minutes. Outside of that, all you need is a blender now. I ended up just eyeballing everything, so first in go the bell peppers, followed by some olive oil and the pomegranate molasses, which is a super interesting sour syrup. After blending that, I added the breadcrumbs, walnuts, and substituted some red chili powder for Aleppo pepper before blending everything together until it was nice and cohesive. To serve this, I spooned it out into a bowl, added some more crumbled walnuts, a drizzle of olive oil, and a drop or two of that pomegranate molasses, and it's super interesting taste-wise, but it also has a great coarse texture due to those breadcrumbs and one of my all-time favorites. Also, it's kind of nuts just how many ways baguettes can be utilized. So a big thank you to Geico for sponsoring today's video. I'm partnering with Geico this year to explore meals that save you both time and money in the kitchen and are just flat out delicious too. So check out the link below to see all the ways that you could switch and save with Geico. A big thank you to them. And lastly, let me know down in the comments which of the baguette creations you want to try first and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace y'all. Also, I'm genuinely sick of baguettes now. See ya.